you go back into the real world, look for a miracle and see what you find. Or a cool sign or a neat thing that you've never noticed before. I guarantee they're out there. All right. Sound good? Ah. All right. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take a little, now you guys, are you're sitting in tables or you're sitting next to people, I like to make things a little interactive, all right? So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to actually talk about this concept. What's the path you're on? Like, what have you been looking for? I was looking for four leaf clovers. And what might you start noticing? What else might you be passing up? What are you stepping over? Just like I was stepping over pennies for a year. What are you stepping over? Yeah? Make sense? So have a little chat at your table. Maybe the other people will give you a perspective about what you might see on your journey. What cool things are there waiting for you to find them? So take two or three minutes and then we'll come back together. <laughs> So I start driving and it had been kind of under a bank of snow. 
snow, right? So I, I get all the snow off and I start driving and it's really sluggish. It's like bump, 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 bump. So we're bumping along, me and George, and it's just really not feeling good. I'm like, man, this is brutal. And about a mile or two or three, it's raining and sleeting at this point. I pull over because I'm like, something's really wrong. And I get out and I look around and sure enough, one of my tires has gone flat. And now I've been driving on it for a good three miles. And I look at my GPS and it says there's a service station like less than a mile from here. And I think, well, how much more damage could I do, right? So I proceeded to drive the other mile because I didn't want to call my brother-in-law and ask him to come help me because he always likes to give me a bad time about stuff. So I didn't want him, I didn't want to forever, for the rest of my life, hear about the story of the time of Christmas he had to change my tire and the sleeting and the snowy weather, right? So instead, the story I get now is that I'm so selfish, I deprived him of the story of changing my tire and the snow. I was like, ah, I can't win, right? So now I drive over to this place and I'm a little grumpy, needless to say, right? I have forgotten that perspective is a choice, that there's always positive perspectives available. Um, so I get out of the car and I go in and right before I turn into the shop, I find a quarter on the ground. Now, I told you I've been picking up pennies and stuff for a long time. Pennies are pretty common. You find a penny, or at least I find a penny almost every day because I'm looking, right? Nickels and dimes you find once in a while. When you find a quarter, that's like a huge find. I mean, as happy as I got about that 20 when I first found it, that's how happy I get about quarters now. It's like, ah, this is awesome. Perspective, I know how hard they are to find, right? So I find a quarter, so I'm feeling a little better, right? And I go in, and the guy's like, you're going to have to take all your stuff out of the trunk so we can get to the spare, blah, 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 because we don't have a rim. We've destroyed your rim, and you can't drive on it anymore. We don't have a tire with this. <laughs> so now I have all these first world problems. Like, oh, I have to take all my cool presents out of the trunk put in the back seat. This sucks, right? First world problem for sure. So uh, I waited for them to make the change and I walked around this little strip mall and I went to the grocery store and I found another quarter. And now my day's really starting to turn around because I thought, well, I got a flat tire, but this is a great penny story, right? I found a couple of quarters, things aren't so bad. And the happier I got, I went to the next shop and I found another quarter. I ended up finding three quarters that morning. And so I was pretty happy, although a little bummed because this, um, this detour was going to make me miss a little sister date that my sister and I had planned in the city. She had drove back there to get her hair done and was going to come to my apartment and we were going to have popcorn and watch a movie. And so I thought, well, I can either be really bummed that I didn't get to see it, even though I did just spend a week with my sister, or I can just keep enjoying my day. You know, while I'm out here in the country, I'll just go out to the good Walmart, the big one. They don't have those in the city and I'll do a little more shopping. And so I, I, now I'm feeling a little better, and I drive over to the Walmart, and I'm in the parking lot after the shopping, and I'm getting ready to back out, and this lunatic comes and like bangs on the trunk of my car. And I'm like freaking out, and then the person comes and like is staring at the driver's window, and the lunatic turned out to be my sister. <laughs> she had ended up at the exact same Walmart, and I got to show her all the cool stuff I just bought, and we got to have our little, it's like an impromptu sister day, right? So, as I was going through this thing and I was driving home, I thought, you know, it didn't turn out so bad. Yes, I have a flat tire. Yes, I have to buy a new ram. Yes, all this other stuff, you know, was affected. But I could either have a bad attitude about the stuff that's still facing me. I gotta buy this rim and the tire's broken and all that. And that's still gonna be true. Or I could have a good attitude and look at all the stuff I learned. And the funny story about this, my sister banging on my trunk, right? and all the fun stops that I made along the way, the people I got to interact with. Because the truth is, when you have a bad situation, whatever it is, budget cuts, bad economy, right? Trouble in your relationship, any of those things. You have that situation no matter what. The only choice you get is your attitude. Would you rather have a bad choice or a bad situation and a bad attitude about it, or a bad situation and a good attitude about it? Right? So when you have a flat tire, metaphorically, right, it might be a flat tire or something else, ask yourself, is it going to make it any better if I'm grumpy about it? If I dwell on it? Right? If the answer is no, then why keep dwelling? Right? Why? So that's what the flat tire taught me. My tire was not any less flat because I'm positive and I find pennies. But my day was a lot better because I'm positive and I find pennies. Then the flat tire became part of the day. It wasn't the whole story of the day.
come on this journey? Who do I get to become as I'm facing this change? How will I grow? What's going to be exciting for me? And if you think of it in terms of that, it makes facing the scary changes a little less scary. It's more of an adventure, right? Good stuff. All right, now what? Where do I go next? Window. The window. This one? Okay. This is actually my favorite. Uh, this is something I got from a motivational speaker that I saw here at Saracosa when I was 10, 11 maybe? Roger Crawford? Anyone? I know my mom remembers it. You remember. A couple people remember. Okay. People who were special friends. Yay! Right? Roger Crawford. Amazing, amazing man. Right? Actually, I was so excited about his speaking. I, I kept, I, we got some tapes and I wore them out. Remember cassette tapes and how if you listen to them? Great, great. Yes. I actually wore them out. All right? And when I was in my first job, when I moved to Washington, D.C., I was starting to think about maybe I want to do motivational speaking. And I sent him an email and he called me at work. He was like a movie star to me. I was like so sorry for me. I was wrong the phone. Oh. <laughs> so this is something that he actually said, a perspective that I've held for the last couple of years, and it served me really well. Right? I'm going to borrow a black crayon from this table. Right? Right? What he said when he was talking to us was, when you look outside, do you see bright sunshine, or do you just see the dirty window? I am often accused of being an optimist. It is true. I was on a date one time with a psychiatrist, and he actually called me a pathological optimist. <laughs> I used it as a title on my next business card. <laughs> I think he was actually trying to diagnose me. <laughs> but what I know to be true as an optimist is that people will tell you, but Leslie, the dirt on the window, that's the reality. The reality. As if there is only one. Right? And I say, well, of course, dirt on the window is the reality for you, right? If that's where you stop looking. But there's so the sunshine that's on the other side, that is also a reality. I don't believe there's just one reality. There is never one truth or the answer. That's why I get a little nervous speaking to groups. It's like, do they think I have the answer? I don't. Just in case you were hoping I was going to give you the answer today, I don't have it. There isn't the answer. There's only a answer that I have for myself, and you might find some useful pieces of it for your story, right? So the dirt, yes, that is one reality. But the sunshine that's on the other side of the window is also a reality. And as an optimist, pathological optimist, I find it my job, when I have dirt on my window, to get out the Windex and clean the window, to open the window. If it gets really crazy, I will break the window. And if all else fails, just leave the window and go outside, okay? <laughs> Stand in the sunshine. There's nothing like warm sunshine on your face. But find the reality that pleases you. Find the reality that you enjoy. Find the reality you want more of and focus on that. I love the sunshine. I will never stop looking when I see the dirt. I'll notice it, I'll do something about it if something needs to be done, but I'm focused more on the sunshine because that's what I want in my life, right? I've been seeing this, have you guys ever noticed that on Facebook, like there's, like somebody will post a quote and then 90 other people will do versions of that same quote with some art and everything? The one I keep seeing is a quote by Rumi, a poet, and it says, what you seek is also seeking you. Are you seeking the dirt on the window or are you seeking the sunshine? <laughs> you will get what you are seeking. Think about that. Right. So we're gonna take another little chat with your neighbor's break. And the flavor of this break is, what are you actually seeking? Are you, where have you been stuck? Are you looking at the sunshine and how do you get more of that? Or are you getting stuck on the dirt and see if the people at your table can help you find the sunshine on the other side of the dirt? Right? What's the dirt that you're stuck on and what's behind the dirt? What's the sunshine that you're missing if you stay focused on that dirt? Yeah? Make sense? We don't have enough time. We don't have enough time. I know. We're skimming the surface here, right? But take just a couple of minutes and talk about that. What's the dirt you're hung up on and what's the sunshine on the other side you'd rather be focused on? Go ahead.
asking me a question and I was trying to clap, I still be counting as he claps his All right. So someone came and said to me, well, you guys were doing that, and it was totally true. The dirt on the window is our belief system. It's like the filters that we use, the stories that we believe in our head. Part of what I do is I'm a coach for people, business coach, life coach, coach of whatever they need. But part of our work is to figure out what are the belief systems that just aren't serving you, right? My mom always said a lot when I was growing up, don't be a quitter. That was really important. If you signed up for soccer, you're playing the whole season, right? You don't want to leave your team behind you. It's really important not to be a quitter. And so I learned that. That was one of my tapes, my stories in my head. Don't be a quitter, don't be a quitter, don't be a quitter. And it served me most of the time until I got on a contract that was just terrible. These people didn't communicate well. My skills were not being used. I was mostly just filing papers and it just wasn't working for me. But I had this old story, don't be a quitter, don't be a quitter, don't be a quitter. And it never occurred to me that there might be a clause that said, unless you just need to be. Like, it's okay once in a while, right? So sometimes the dirt on the window is coming from those filters, those stories that you got from your parents, your church, your teachers. So every time you come up against one of those dirt things on the window, you're like, ee, 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 that one doesn't come off so easy. You just have to ask yourself, not is it right or wrong, it might have been right, that was right, don't be a quitter, served me more than it didn't serve me. It was right 99% of the time. Is it right for me right now? Does it work in this situation? What was the intent behind it, right? And once you start going like, oh, I don't have to do that all the time, there are no hard, fast rules, or very few hard, fast rules. You'll find these little situations where you're like, 99% of the time, I want to do this, but this one time, it feels like this is the right thing. Trust your instincts on those, and see if that clears away the dirt and helps you find the sunshine. That's how you know if it's the right time to ignore the rule. You start to see the sunshine and go, yes, this makes sense. And only you know what your sunshine is. No one else can tell you that. Right? I've read a ton of self-help books. I practically made a profession of going to workshops to be a better person for a long time. And I think they should all have the same subtitle at the end of it, including my book. This worked for me, it may or may not work for you. Right? It's an idea, right? Nobody's gonna have a 100% answer for you. They might have a lot of cool stuff that you're like, oh, I can learn from this. So if you go to a lecture like this or read a self-help book and get one or two new ways of thinking, you're doing great, right? And then develop your own. Trust your way of thinking. Yeah. I can think of one new way of thinking that you know everybody every day. All right. And that is to understand that most people are doing the best they can with what they have to work with. I love that. Did you guys hear what she said? Most people are doing the best they can with what they have to work with, right? One of my mentors, a guy that I learned a lot from, I, in fact, I think I learned from him, always assume the best about people. Assume they're doing the best they can with what they've got. We were supposed to have a phone call, and I called the line, and he didn't show up, and my assumption was he had something come up. He wasn't doing it to be a jerk, right? This was one of my mentors. I love this guy. So I assumed the best. Like, he'll call me when the time is right, when it makes sense. So when we finally did connect, he apologized so much. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm like, John, you were the one that taught me assume the best. I assumed you were taking care of yourself and that you, it didn't mean anything about me that you didn't show up to the call. It meant something about your situation, not about me, right? One of the best lessons you can ever learn too is don't take things personally. But it turned out his mother had passed away and that was what he was dealing with. So how much of a jerk would I have been if I got mad at him Instead of just having compassion for the fact that we agreed to meet and he didn't, it was so unlike him not to show up to a call that I just assumed the best and I thought, huh, why don't I assume the best about everybody all the time? And not just assume the best, but do my best to make them look good. So I take that with me everywhere. Clerk at the grocery store, I want to make this the best transaction he has today, right? How do I make him look like a rock star clerk? I'm going to go ahead and fast forward us to the story with the camera just because it seems to tie into what we're talking about now. A few years ago, I was doing this really cool little photo project called uh, 100 Strangers. It was really neat. Uh, the idea is you walk up to people on the street, you say, I think you have something cool about you, can I take a portrait of you? And then you post it to this community. It was started in like Sweden or something. And you did this 100 times. 
and every group of photos had something for you to work on. So it was like, work on your approach to people for the first 20. And then the second 20 is just getting the faces really clear. And the third 20 was something else, right? So I was doing this project and I was really into it. And so my camera had become very important to me. So I dropped my camera and it broke and I immediately bought another one because I broke it and I felt bad. And I loved this particular camera. It's a Canon PowerShot. Does anyone have a Canon PowerShot? It's the world's greatest camera. I love those things. It has this color setting where you can pick one color and it just makes that really vibrant and everything else is black and white. Totally awesome, right? So I have this camera, I'm all excited, and I actually got an underwater case to go with the camera. And I took it to Hawaii and it had been all over. It had been to Bahamas, friends had borrowed it, it had taken all these brilliant underwater pictures, but this particular trip, it got the water trapped in with the camera instead of out with the camera. The case didn't do its job. So I called Canon and I said, hmm, uh, can you tell me the procedure to follow when one of your products makes another one of your products fail? And they said, oh, I'm sorry, we can't help you. We guarantee the camera, not the case. <laughs> really? I had to peel myself off the ceiling of the hotel room that night. So I, you know, I bitched to my girlfriends for a while. Can you believe these guys? What kind of company would do that? We only guarantee half our products. Right? So I put all the broken pieces in my suitcase and I took them home and I threw them on my windowsill with my other broken camera. And a few weeks, maybe even months went by and I was getting ready to move to a, a new location and I needed to do something with all these broken bits and pieces because I wasn't going to pack them up and take them with me. And I was in a really good mood that day. I had sold my condo, got a good price. So for whatever reason, I was really happy and I sat down and I'm like, I'm going to write Canada a letter. But I'm going to take a different approach. I'm not going to complain about their stupid policy and why you don't, why don't you guarantee the case? Like, come on. I'm going to tell them what I love about this camera. I'm going to tell them how awesome it is and why I can't live without it and how all my friends use the pictures I take as their profile pictures on Facebook. So I wrote literally a three-page letter telling them how awesome they are, including pictures, of course, right? It's a camera, right? So I have pictures in there, and I put it in there, and I just ended by saying, like, I don't know if it's possible or not, but it would make me really happy to get a new camera back. If there was a waterproof case involved, that would be awesome too. But really just one working camera, I mean, I'm sending you two. Really, I don't think I'm asking for anything. But if not, I understand. I'm just happy for all the years I have the camera and all the great pictures I took. So I send it off, and I feel really good. I actually had fun writing the letter. This is why it was three pages and not just one. Like, every time I put a new row of pictures, I'd get a new idea. Oh, and then I'll tell them this. Oh, and then I'll tell them that, right? And so when I sent it off, I didn't think anything of it. And about 10 days later, a box arrives, postman puts it in my front door, and I open it up, and it's a brand new camera, and a brand new waterproof case, and a letter from Canon that said, Dear Miss Stein, we are under no obligation to replace your camera, but we were so entertained by your letter <laughs> that we decided to go ahead and do so. That's pretty good. Who you appreciate, who you admire, who inspires you. 
and I'm going to give you a couple minutes to use the crayons, draw them a picture, use the three by five cards. There's pens, there's crayons. Who inspires you? Thinking about it makes you feel better. You'll leave happier if you've been thinking about that, right? And then you'll have something to give them. So make sure to do it on the three by five cards, because remember, you guys get to take those. The notebooks stay with me for the, the junior high kids. If you would like to write your cheer letter to a junior high kid, write it inside the notebook. That's for you. All right, so take a couple minutes. And after this part's over, I just want to hear some of what you're cheering about. What was the concept? You don't have to tell us all the details, but I admire someone who helps me out. Or I love this person for that, all right? So we'll look for a couple to share at the end, all right? So take a couple minutes for that. Go ahead.
Alright, so I was trying not to talk for too much longer than an hour because, you know, people get antsy and it's hard to sit still for that long. So those are the stories that I'm going to share with you. Um, just in closing, thank you so much for coming. I love sharing stories. I love um, hearing insights from people. Did anyone have a good one to share? Like, what inspired you that you wrote about or you, you talked to somebody on your note? Yeah. My cat just died. So um, his death has taught us that it's worth it's worth loving something. Uh, it's inspired a book called The Pause Clause. Aww. And it's, it's, and then in it, it's basically between lines, someone says, what was that all about? And it's called The Ranch, where they're at. Aww. And then the person that's talking says, uh, what? And the guy says, oh, hey, what are you talking about? And he says, the things that the occur. And then, you know, and then, well, they're not the things that first they pause. <laughs> you know, and oh, that's the pause with the pause clause. The pause clause. You know, and then, you know, basically, that's injury to small friends. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a great point that you made. Like, yeah. it's worth loving someone or loving something, even though you know you're going to lose it in the end. Like, pets bring so much to our lives, and, you know, thinking about that stuff, you learn from that. That's the kind of thing. I actually, the reason I started bringing crayons and uh, these 3 by 5 cards to the talks that I do is because I do one of these every single night. I a, used to think I was a terrible artist, and I realized it's because I never practiced, right? And so I started before bed every night writing down a note, one thing I'm grateful for. And I write that on the line side, and the other side I color a picture, and it just, I wake up in the morning feeling better because the last thing I did at night was talk about what I was grateful for. And so, you know, it's like, remember, it got me through my cat dying. It was a rough time, right? My dad having heart surgery. Like, those are not easy things to deal with. And people say, how do you stay positive? And I say, because I work at it. It's a muscle you got to build. So when you go to bed and you're grumpy, do you want to go to bed grumpy? Because you're probably going to wake up that way. Or do you want to take time to think, what was the one good thing about today? Right? So feel free to stay and doodle and draw on the 3 by 5 cards. Spread love in the world, take them, share them with people, write notes to the kids in the notebooks. Uh, but I'm going to call it quits for now. I'll be in the back. If you'd like to buy a book, I would happily sign it for you. Uh, on the back, I call my book, it's the mullet book. It's business in the front, party in the back. <laughs> right? Because on the back cover, my best friend, Karina over here, hey Karina, right? Crafted an Abraham Lincoln hat for my kitty cat. And I have my Abraham Lincoln hat. So we can take pictures with Abraham Lincoln, buy a book, um, and I'll stand around and answer questions. I'll stay until everybody's done. So I, you know, I love chatting with people. If you have cool perspectives to share or stories, I love hearing those too. But thank you so much. I had a blast working with you guys.